This is it. The time has come. I said the time has come. From the four corners of the world to the four corners of this ring right here at the MGM Grand Garden Arena, Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, the fight starts now! Introducing first the challenger. He fights out of the red corner and wears the white. The six skin silver trim. He scaled 134 point four pounds. His professional record: 32 victories, one defeat, one draw, with 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of South El Monte, California, is the 2012 Southpaw Olympian, the former IBF Super Featherweight Champion of the World, and the current WBC Interim Lightweight Champion, Joseph Jojo Diaz! Diaz! And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner. He is the defending world champion. He wears black with green trim. He scaled at the lightweight limit of 135 pounds, bang on. At the young age of 17 years old, he joined the paid ranks. Four years later, he became a world champion. He stands before you this evening with a perfect professional record. 26 fights, 26 victories, 15 of them coming by way of knockout. Tonight, he makes his fourth defense in this world title. Living, training, and fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA. Here is one of boxing's youngest and brightest stars, the reigning, defending, WBC lightweight champion of the world, Devin the Dream Haney. Haney. This arena just came alive. They are buzzing. There's Jojo Diaz who said, I hope Haney wants to trade with me. I can take his power, but he cannot take mine. And Devin Haney saying, listen, I know Jojo better than he knows himself. I will break him down piece by piece. Here we go. 12 rounds for the WBC lightweight title. Both fighters came right to the middle of the ring. It's very territorial. Who wants to control the middle of the ring? Devin Haney getting really aggressive with that front foot. Wants to back up Joseph Diaz early. Sergio, I know you said that this fight will be decided in the later round. One of the mistakes Roy Linares made in his fight against Devin Haney was getting started too late. It wasn't until about the sixth round that Linares picked it up. Diaz can't afford to do that against Haney. Linares had to respect the power and the speed and the reach of Devin Haney as well. I mean, he has a great time left jab and a left hook, so you have to respect that. This crowd taking no prisoners, already booing these guys. Straight right hand lands for Devin. There's a right, partially blocked. Surprised that it's Haney who's working more? No, not at all. This is what I'm expecting. The first couple of rounds, Jojo Diaz is just trying to get the timing down of Haney. Trying to break that distance, trying to get the rhythm of it. He doesn't want to make a, make a mistake too early. Yeah, this is where Haney's team wants him to be. They don't want him counter-punching or moving. They want him standing there and flicking that jab out at Jojo Diaz. They see that jab, Sergio, 
was almost a trap set. They wanted to throw it high, make JoJo lunge in, so they can hit him with a counter shot. JoJo's a naturally smaller man coming up in weight, coming up in size. This is the biggest and tallest and the fastest fighter he's been in front of, so it's gonna take a little bit of time to get that down. Seven inch reach advantage for the Dream. said if he wants to get inside he's gonna have to go through hell to get there well, he's right he saw the way Diaz fought against Javier Fortuna Javier Fortuna a decent sized guy himself he just let Jojo walk in Devin Haney is not letting Diaz come in without absorbing one or two shots and Sergio you told me earlier today watch out for the cuts on Jojo Diaz and we've already seen redness on his face yeah with shots like that that's that's what I could see happening that cut opens up, it's gonna be a hard, he's gonna have to fight the jab of Devin Haney and have to fight the blood. Jump off the bridge. Notice how Devin Haney keeps stepping over the right foot of Jojo Diaz, controlling the footwork and the foot position. Very smart on Haney's part. A dominating round one for Devin Haney here in Las Vegas. Fight. And Stitch Duran as well, the cut guy. And usually you don't want to have too many voices in the corner, but it seems like, like they told any of the right things and they have a good rhythm in that corner. George Cambosis, the unified champion, is here with us as well. George, what are you making this fight so far? Yeah, it's a good start from Devin Haney. He's using his length, he's using his reach, and uh, he's looking sharp. But uh, JoJ in this round looks like he's putting a bit more pressure on, so it's getting exciting. Success here hasn't found anything of consequence. But he's getting a little closer to Haney now. And Haney is comfortable punching at the gloves of Jojo Diaz. Nothing really breaking through. Well, that was a great body shot by Devin Haney. Diaz caught him with the right hand in the body as well. And right now it's almost target practice for Haney. Well, you heard his corner say, be careful, don't get lulled to sleep. for Devin Haney to start punching around the guard of Jojo Diaz. Jojo has that right, the guard's right up, but go around with hooks, left and right hooks, if you're Haney. Sergio, really impressed with the footwork so far of Devin Haney. He told me in the locker room he has fought a southpaw before, just once, but he's keeping that left foot around the foot of Jojo Diaz, which is giving us leverage on these shots. Anytime his left foot is in the inside of Diaz, he puts it around. That's educated footwork. Jojo Diaz's only loss came against Gary Russell Jr. at Featherweight back in May of 2018. Nice check hook by Haney on the inside. They exchange hooks. Haney got the better of it with the left hook. Oh, jab lands for Jojo. But Haney punished him straight away. Surely, JoJo starting to close the distance a little bit. Stop! Stop! No, 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 that was, that was that. That was good. Wait, wait, hey, don't turn. Let's go. JoJo does a good job cutting off the ring and using his experience. He's not getting hit with nothing cleanly.
that's what you don't want Jojo Diaz doing, lunging like that, falling off balance, because Devin Haney has a wicked uppercut if he can time that coming in. So Haney steps back looking for those counters right there, so you don't want to fall short of your Diaz. Just like that. Nice uppercut from the dream. One thing I love about Devin Haney's game is that for such a young fighter, he has got great punch placement. We saw that in the fight against Linares. He rarely throws at the same spot twice. Is this the way the fight's gonna go for the next no. nine rounds? I already said it twice. After the third round, I see JoJo having success because if he plans on winning this fight, he's gonna have to find success in this third and fourth round. The speed, the, the speed and the length of Devin Haney is just too much in the early rounds right now. But the experience will kick in for Jojo Diaz. Diaz has never been stopped, never been knocked down. Says he's never been hurt either. Of course, Haney's never been dropped either. Good little uppercut on the inside, and that forced Haney to take a step back, and then a jab. are just so polished as pros. Even though they both had great amateur success, they're true professionals in there with body shots, hard jabs, not smothering themselves, combinations, just beautiful to watch. Just power boxing at his best. Haney's team doesn't want him moving as much as he's moved this round. Good right hand by Devin Haney, but they know that Jojo Diaz is indefatigable in there. He has got a great motor. They don't want him three, forcing three. Devin to move as much as he has. I like how Jojo is countering to the body of Haney as well. Stop, stop. Get a little chippy in there. And that's what Diaz wants. He wants it to get chippy. He wants it to get a little physical. Ten seconds to go here in the third round. That was off balance. into something. George Cambosis with us. What did you think for three rounds? Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit more exciting and uh, Jojo has put, put a little more pressure on. Uh, but Haney is boxing loss right now. So uh, let's see if they can stand a little bit more and try to give the fans a little bit more. I like that George Cambosis is high on the entertainment value. He wants action. We all do. Oh, body good shot. body shot with a left hand from Jojo Diaz. That's exactly where Diaz wants to be. In the midsection of Devin Haney to slow him down. This is a good spell here for the challenger. I like what Jojo's doing here. He's aiming straight for the body, getting rough, getting physical. All you're going to get is a warning out of that. Okay, remember, Diaz is not afraid of the rough stuff. Had a point taken away early in the fight against Javier Fortuna. Still won by decision. But Jojo's already said his marking round second, with the second round, the third round. The fight didn't win him, but he's already getting closer and landing. That's a good run for Diaz. Oh, big left hand for Diaz. Best punch of the fight. Sergio told us Diaz will come alive after three rounds. That appears to be the case here in the fourth. If I were fighting Devin Haney, that's exactly what I would do. Just get the tempo, get the rhythm, break them down. Then you start applying the pressure. Caught him again. Look at Diaz being the boss here in the fourth. And this is the fight Jojo Diaz wants, and that's what we expected. Stop, stop. Knuckle, knuckle. Chris, how is Haney handling this pressure now? Well, look, JoJo's stepping on the gas more so in this round than he has any other. Devin's got to continue to stand there and keep flicking that jab out there. That's got to be his weapon against Diaz coming in. Are you surprised at how of a pro JoJo Diaz crowd this is here in Las Vegas, Sergio? No, absolutely not. I mean, we're in Las Vegas and we get the home. Whoa. Oh, the boxing here. Stop! Let go, let go, let go.
Both these guys, tremendous counter punchers. That's why they have so much respect for each other, just throwing single, single shots and one-twos. Anything after that can get countered. Let's see if Haney can regain control of this round here in the final 10 seconds. Good jab, and now it's Haney talking smack. Cavalcade of stars continue. What? What a fourth round that was, especially by Jojo Diaz. Look on, look on. Both guys have had success through the course of this fight. And I'll tell you guys this, and I'll shut up. Listen, this, <laughs> listen, <laughs> more, than, more than conditioning, more than power, more than speed, whoever has is consistent at their game plan and what they're doing well is who's going to win this fight. You got to be consistent every single round for the end of this fight. Look at Haney going right to the body and hard. Yeah, I agree with Sean Porter. Both these guys, you can see what their game plan is. Devin Haney wants to operate behind the jab, see if he can lure JoJo in for counter shots. JoJo is trying as best he can to get on the inside. These last round plus, he has had the most success he's had this fight. Consistency and laser focus, because we're seeing the exact same thing that Devin Haney was doing with Jorge Linares. Linares didn't start having success until the ninth round, and the tenth round we started hurting and rocking Haney. Let's look at Chris Mannix's scorecard through four. Yeah, I've got it three rounds to one in favor of Devin Haney. Thought he might have done, as you see JoJo flurrying in the corner. A straight left hand. Bent Haney, and then he came around the guard. Love the body shots. Keep on with the body shots of your deals. Around the guard goes Haney, that high guard from Diaz. Haney, or rather Diaz, telling us, listen, I'm not afraid of Haney's power at all. I want to eat two to land one. And Sergio, you called that in the last round. Haney started to go around that guard of Diaz, landing those shots. And that's what you do whenever you, you're dealing with a fighter with that peekaboo defense. You go around the guard, be content hitting gloves. These are points being piled up by Devin Haney. Devin Haney said, if he tries to pressure me all night, I'll use that aggression against JoJo Diaz. Hand and a good one from Haney. Let go, let go. Stop, stop. Let go. I think step both up, these fighters up. are fo following their game plan to a T. Nip and tuck back and forth. Stop, stop. Oh. Let go, let go. I carry no emotion 
in the ring whatsoever. Even when I spar my friends, I beat the crap out of them. right here by Devin Haney. Shifting, punching, countering, not staying still. That's the sweet science right there, guys. Diaz has him in the corner. That's where he wants him to be. Little success there, but Haney quickly out. Punches through round five. Look at the land. It punches Chris Mannix way closer than it feels. Yeah, it does feel like it's a little, should be a little more lopsided for Devin Haney, but JoJo has kept that guard up consistently. Maybe he's blocked more than we thought. Not that landing cleanly, like I said earlier, but still, those are points. Even though they're not landing cleanly, you're still punching something. Haney sat down on that punch. Overhand right. Do you think Haney respects JoJo's power? I think Joe. I think uh, Haney respects JoJo, period, because he knows he's gritty. He knows he can get there. He has to respect the counter punching, too. Let's bring back in George Campos. We're at the halfway point, George. What do you see? Yeah, look, Devin's boxing nice. He's moving. He's, uh, he's pinpointing his shots. But uh, again, JoJo Dez is still there. He's still coming forward. So, uh, you know, it is getting nice and exciting. And, um, you know, we can see Devin's uh, boxing skills. But uh, you can see the hunger is all in JoJo Dez. Sergio, if the judges see it about the same way Chris does, Diaz is running out of rounds if he wants to win a decision. JoJo's in this fight, but I don't know if he's winning rounds. Let's send it over to Chris Maddox, who's with. Bill, what are you seeing out of, out of Devin? I see Jojo uh, breaking down. He's a great fighter, right? And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm happy. And I'm happy with what Devin is doing. Uh, Jojo didn't come. He didn't come to lay down. This was great. The, just the fight that the people want to see. Everyone is, uh, Jojo, he brought a lot of people out. We're doing good. He's doing really good right now. What adjustments would you like to see Devin make in the second half of this fight? Uh, actually, just be, just, just be a little bit more patient. And, and he's doing that. He's doing that. Thanks, Bill. Willing to seem, Sergio, or willing to stand and trade now. And here's another gear. Everyone wants to see if Devin Haney has that aggressive gear. He's backing up JoJo. He's giving an opportunity for JoJo to land something. JoJo keeps that gear muffs up. And in between rounds, you heard Devin Haney say, JoJo's fading. He's fading. I don't think he's fading. I just think Haney's getting more com comfortable in there. Crowd rising up. They think JoJo Diaz is on to something here. Oh, Big that shot. Left hook caught him. Got a smile out of Devin Haney, but he sure felt that one. He smiled when the Norris hurt him too. A minute to go here in round seven. JoJo's round so far. Another left hand from Jojo Diaz.
the last round, Devin Haney was winning the round, and then he got inconsistent. He changed his style, and he started getting caught with an overhand left and a couple of straight lefts as well. JoJo Diaz found that left hand in the last round. If he's consistent at doing that, JoJo may close the distance on these points, but right now I think that Devin Haney has a comfortable lead. Yeah, Chris, it feels like JoJo's going to have to win most of, if not all, the remaining rounds to get a decision. Well, I think he's still very much in this fight. Doesn't have to get reckless, doesn't have to get desperate. Just continue what he's been doing over these last couple of rounds. Get on the inside, dig to the body. You have the opportunity to throw that overhand left. Let it rip. Chris Mannix has given two rounds to JoJo Diaz. Another shot to the body, straight right hand from Haney. He caught him on the ear. Forces 
JoJo backwards, and this might be the moment for Devin Haney. He's splitting the guard. And then finally, JoJo fires back, and he caught Haney in the line of fire. Best round of the fight. I think Diaz rocked him with that right hook. Oh, and he caught him again. again. Caught him with the right. JoJo Diaz in a big round, and he just got one. And his punches. Zaro, stop. Stops up. I felt like that was a good round for JoJo, Jojo Diaz. Okay, both of you guys okay, both looked at me like I was crazy, was crazy especially you, Maddox. Well, I thought Diaz had some moments there, but to Sergio's point, over three minutes, Devin Haney was in control, landing good body shots. And Diaz's biggest problem in that last round was there were too many times when he had to Haney against the ropes or in the corner, and he did not let his hands go as frequently as he should. The story of the fight is Devin Haney controlling most of the most of the round, and then JoJo landing a big shot or two. And you mentioned how many body shots Diaz has absorbed. That will obviously take a lot of steam out of you. That'll it slow should. down your punching out but It should, but Diaz still coming forward, still backing up Haney. This is where they want him to unload. He's got Haney back in the corner, and that's what he's doing. He's still aiming at Watch that body. Hands. Watch your hands. Okay, stop, stop, Nicole, Nicole. Watch your hands, watch your hands. Entertaining fight here in Las Vegas. Look around on social media, Chris, a lot of fans have this sport closer than you do. Could you see an argument for that? Stop! Not really. Let go. Let go. Let go. <laughs> okay. It's not to say Diaz isn't having moments, but for the first half of this fight, Haney was operating behind the jab really well. And while Diaz has been able to close the distance over the last couple of rounds, you still see Haney throwing combinations, landing combinations, having a little bit more success. Look, I love the way Diaz is fighting. I think he, he's having his moments. He's landing some big shots. I think he rocked and got the respect of Haney. But controlling the middle of the ring, that's part of defense. That's part of points as well. It's not all effective aggression. It's ring generalship and defense you get points for. Maybe it's because we're so close to the action, but 432 to 423 will throw. It just seems like Haney is throwing so many more punches. JoJo's trying hard, he's pushing for it. He has landed some good shots, he has had his moments, but um, I don't think the power is there as a natural 135er. Oh, that uppercut buzzed. Diaz Jr., thanks, George. Watch your hands. Right on the 
belt line for Diaz Jr. Good body shot, great body shot by Jojo Diaz. He's looking up at the clock now. They cut that to me. A minute and a half to go in the round, he checked that clock. I think this... Haney's in control, he's winning rounds, but it, I'm pretty sure he wants this fight to be over with already. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Get your head up. Well, not much time left. Only one more round to go. Diaz trying to find something special, something dramatic here. Decision and 
and still the WBC lightweight champion in the world, Devin the Dream Haney. And the judges got it right, Todd. This is what we saw. It was a close, it was a competitive fight, but it was a unanimous decision. 117-111 sounds about right. It's the same scorecard Chris Mannix had. One judge saw it slightly closer at 116-112. Styles make fights, Sergio. If they had this fight a hundred more times, would it look the same way? This is the reason Jojo Diaz is a championship level fighter. He's only lost to champions, but he's always in the fight. He's one punch away from turning the entire tide. We're gonna see Jojo Diaz again, and we're gonna see him on the championship level. That was a fantastic fight. George